Hello, and welcome to this worship service. My name is Carmen Little, and I am a lay leader with the Chetwin Shared Ministry. It is my pleasure to be able to worship with you today. We begin our service this morning with our call to worship. God has set this day before us, a day set apart, a day of rest and praise. God has set our lives before us, a span of years in which we love and learn and serve. God has set God's seal upon our hearts so that we might live fully in deep love. Let us worship God. We begin in prayer. God of the open road, God of the twisting path, God of the narrow and upward way, your people are gathered for worship. In this hour, give us provision for the journey, courage and faith and compassion and endurance to face any hardship. Open our eyes to see you walking beside us, protecting us, encouraging us, loving us. We pray this in the name of Jesus who moves us. Amen. Christians believe that the Bible is inspired by God, is without error, and does not misrepresent the facts. It is entirely trustworthy and is the final authority on everything it teaches. The Bible records the drama of redemption in the history of Israel and the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Bible is a compilation of 66 books and letters written by more than 40 authors during a period of approximately 1,500 years. Its original text was communicated in just three languages, Hebrew, Common Greek, and Aramaic. The Old Testament was written for the most part in Hebrew with a small percentage in Aramaic. The New Testament was written in Greek. All religious traditions that ground themselves in text must grapple with certain questions. In worship services and public and private readings, Christians often turn to scripture for guidance, to the stories of Abraham or Moses, to the Psalms, to the prophecies of Isaiah, to the life of Jesus, to the letters of Paul, or to the vision of John. Therefore, Christians must confront their own set of questions. What is scripture? Is it divine, human, both? Is scripture authoritative? If so, how and for whom? What is the scope of its authority? Is scripture inspired by God? How should scripture be used? How do scripture and tradition relate? What does it mean for Christians to call the Bible the Word of God? And if Jesus is also called the Word of God, how does Jesus as the Word of God relate to the Bible as the Word of God? The good news is that we are not the first to try and answer these questions. In fact, 2,000 years of Christian history provide us a tradition of helpful answers as numerous Christian theologians have wrestled with these very questions. Theologians at different times have focused on different questions regarding scripture. In the pastric and medieval eras, the focus was on relating the literal meaning of the text to allegorical or spiritual interpretations. During the Reformation, the debates focused on who had the authority to define and interpret scripture. After the Enlightenment, theologians tried to determine how the Bible was still the word of God in light of historical critical methods that seemed to challenge its historicity and reliability. However, in spite of all the various approaches, Christian theologians have been unified in dealing with a central issue. How the self-disclosure of God in Jesus 
relate to the scriptures as the Word of God. A central question is always the relationship between the Word becoming human flesh, incarnation, and the Word becoming human words. The Bible is God-breathed and gets its true, authoritative, powerful, holy character from God himself, who inspired human authors to write exactly what he wanted them to write. Instead of merely dictating words to them, God worked through their unique personalities and circumstances. Scripture is, therefore, both fully human and fully divine. It is both a testimony of men to God's revelation, divine revelation itself. No prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation, for no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they, carried, as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible is God's word in human words, it can be trusted as the definitive revelation from the mouth of God himself. If you open up a dictionary or encyclopedia to any random page, you'll have no trouble understanding the entry you stumble across. These books are designed to give you snapshots of information and not much more. We all know, however, that the Bible doesn't quite work that way. We've all opened our Bibles to a particular passage or book and felt immediately lost. Questions immediately abound. What does the author mean by this? How did we get from marriage to slaves in just a few verses? How does this apply to me? What does Lamentations have to do with Philippians? These types of questions puzzle even the seasoned pastor or veteran seminary student. There are two primary reasons why the Bible can be puzzling. First, the Bible is a collection of types of books, history, poetry, biography, letters, apocalyptic imagery. We don't read the Bible like we read a history book about World War II or a biography on Martin Luther King Jr. The Bible contains all kinds of books. It is a library of writings developed and collected over thousands of years. Though it has one coherent message, we can't read Lamentations and Philippians the same way because they weren't written for the same purpose, during the same time, or even by the same author. And they were all written 2,000 plus years ago in different times and places than our own. Second, and related to the first point, the Bible is a story not an encyclopedia. The Bible is meant to be read as one unit, not picked through like a Sunday buffet. We can't understand the New Testament without the Old Testament. We can't understand Jesus' life and ministry apart from Genesis, the Psalms, Isaiah, and so on. So while there are many types of books over a long period of time within the Bible, they rely on each other and explain each other. Once we understand these things, we can then ask the question, what do we do about it? Not everyone has time, energy, or even the calling to go to seminary. The vast majority of Christians in the world are not paid by a church or organization to study the Bible every day. But God's Word is for all of us. The Bible was written to reveal God to us, show us how to worship Him, and educate us in becoming more like Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Since this is true, the good news is that the Bible shouldn't scare us. It should instead invigorate us. The God of the universe revealed Himself to us. Christians believe that the Bible is inspired by God, 
is without error and does not misrepresent the facts. It is entirely trustworthy and is the final authority on everything it teaches. The Bible records the drama of redemption in the history of Israel and the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. As Christians, we acknowledge both Jesus and Scripture as the Word of God. Christians should not focus solely on Jesus Christ and treat Scripture like any other classic text. Nor should we focus primarily on the Bible as God's divine, inerrant Word and treat Jesus as simply a character in a small part of the text. Jesus is the central message. God participating in human life, coming near to us, bringing his good news, expressing God's love for us, dying as our substitute, rising as the victor over death, and building his church as a community of grace. Jesus is not just the main character in one of many events in the story of God's people. Jesus is the final revelation of God's drama of redemption. Humanity sees God in full light in Jesus. And Jesus is God's ultimate word about human life, and the Bible is God's word about God's self-revelation through human life. This is what Christian theologians have been saying in various ways for 2,000 years. In answering the question, what is scripture? Theological giants like Origen, Augustine, Thomas Aquinas, Martin Luther, John Calvin, Hans Urs von Balthasar, Karl Barth, and others have given us many categories to use, concepts to ponder, and doctrines of scripture to consider and wrestle with. Yet in spite of their differences, they are unified in their doctrines of scripture, and they're all surprisingly Christ-centered. Listen to this description of the grand biblical story by Sally Lloyd-Jones. Now, some people think the Bible is a book of rules telling you what you should and shouldn't do. The Bible certainly does have some rules in it. They show you how life works best. But the Bible isn't mainly about you and what you should be doing. It's about God and what He has done. Other people think the Bible is a book of heroes showing you people you should copy. The Bible does have some heroes in it, but as you'll find out, most of the people in the Bible aren't heroes at all. They make some pretty big mistakes, and sometimes on purpose. They get afraid, and they run away. At times, they are just downright mean. No, the Bible isn't a book of rules or a book of heroes. The Bible is most of all a story. It takes the whole Bible to tell this story, and the center of the story, there is a baby. Every story in the Bible whispers his name. He is like the missing piece in a puzzle, the piece that makes all the other pieces fit together, and suddenly you see a beautiful picture. The deepest message of the Bible and the ministry of Jesus is the grace of God to sinners and those who are suffering. That is the story of the Bible. The problem of the human condition is that because of sin, we are guilty and we suffer. Throughout the Bible, we constantly see God taking the initiative to bring his grace to sinners and sufferers from his gracious dealings with the people of Israel to the climactic redemptive work of Jesus Christ in his life, death, and resurrection. The Bible is an amazing story. It pulls no punches in portraying the good, the bad, and the ugly of the human condition. Yet before, between, and beyond is the matchless God and Savior who is actively working to put it all right. It is truly the greatest story ever told, and you are part of that story. Enjoy reading it, digging into it, wrestling with it, reflecting on it, and putting it to use in your own life. It will change you forever. And now we close in prayer. Lord God, constant creator, you write your law on our hearts and remember our sins no more. 
guide us, your people, to know you better and to continue in what we have learned that instructs us on gaining salvation through Jesus Christ. O God, our God, keep us turned to your truth. Lord God, constant creator, grant healing and hope to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, and revive the energy and dedication of all who serve their needs. Lord God, constant creator, your holy wind gives first breath to our loved ones and receives their last earthly sigh. We take divine comfort in your heavenly and eternal welcome for all whose footsteps on this earth and in our hearts will never disappear. O God, our God, keep us turned to your truth. We ask this through Jesus, Son of Man and the Holy Spirit, the breath of life, who together with you are one God, above all, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thank you.